Let's bring in now the CNBC contributor, Dr. Scott Gottlieb. He is, of course, the former head of the FDA. Dr. Gottlieb, good to see you again. We have this new blueprint from the White House. What is your reaction to it? Well, look, it's another step in the right direction, getting more testing into the market. Um, some of the key features here is that CDC is relaxing the recommendations to states on who can get tested. So really giving much more discretion to states to test people who might be mildly symptomatic or concerned that they were in contact with someone who had the disease. So I think it's going to broaden testing in the community. And the collaboration with the retail um, clinics like CVS is going to broaden the ability for people to get point of care um, testing in the community. They're opening up about a thousand sites, retail sites. It's going to bring about 1.5 million tests into the market, uh, assuming supplies last on a monthly basis. So that's a significant expansion in testing capacity. I think as we go through May and get into June, we're going to see testing capacity ramp considerably. It's not all going to be online in time for the reopening of aspects of economic ac activity in the states through May. But by the end of May, I think we're going to have a much different situation in terms of the capacity to do testing and access to testing for consumers. You heard the president there mention the reopening of some schools before the school year uh, is out. How should that work? What would your advice be this evening to the nation's school superintendents? Well, look, different parts of the nation were affected very differently, and we've talked about that. Some parts of the nation haven't had broad epidemics, and they've seen sustained declines as about five or six states that meet the criteria set out by the federal government, set out in the plan that I put out for sustained reduction in new cases that might be able to reopen sooner than many other states. I think the ability to bring students back, even if it's just for three weeks, um, to socialize them before the end of the school year makes sense if you can do it safely. I think there's a lot of states where school is going to be out for the whole year, certainly the states that were harder hit in the Northeast. I think you're likely to see schools not restart in those areas, even if decisions, final decisions haven't been made yet. All right, let's move on to vaccines. You wrote in the Wall Street Journal, of course, an op-ed. Not sure if people have had the chance to see it. It's about winning the global race in uh, a vaccine for COVID-19. Where are we, Dr. Gottlieb, in that race this evening? Well, there's about 70 vaccines in development right now. Six are in clinical trials. The Chinese are actually further ahead than anyone else. They have three vaccines in clinical development in advanced stages of clinical development, so phase two, phase three studies. And they came out over the weekend and said they may have a vaccine as early as next year that, that would be licensed and broadly available. There's two companies in the United States that have vaccines in clinical development right now. There's another couple of companies that will be putting vaccines into clinical de development very soon. So we do have vaccines that are making progress here in the U.S., but the challenge is that any one manufacturer probably isn't going to have enough supply to supply the entire globe, certainly, but may, maybe not even supply their entire domestic market. And so I think the risk is that the countries that have vaccines that come onto the market, they're going to be supply constrained, and they're going to hold on to a lot of that supply for their own domestic markets, notwithstanding the fact that the Japanese and the Europeans have said that they'll ensure equitable distribution of vaccines if past history is any prologue here, then countries are going to hold on to enough vaccine to vaccinate their domestic populations before they allow a lot of supplies to be shipped. So it's very important that I think we make progress on a vaccine and try to get vaccines to the market so that we're not left behind. Let's talk about a, uh, that a little bit more. You say in, in this op-ed we need to, quote, engineer a development and regulatory process that is unprecedented in scope and urgency. Testing six or more candidate vaccines at once during a pandemic has never been tried anywhere but it can be done. Uh, you're confident we can do that? We've never done it before. And the challenge is going to be, there's two challenges here. One is putting multiple vaccines into clinical development. So just recruiting enough patients to simultaneously test so many vaccines. Um, in a setting of outbreaks going into the fall, if we do have outbreaks, and I believe we will, it's going to get easier, unfortunately, to test those vaccines because you would deploy them in the setting of an outbreak to both try to provide a benefit as well as determine whether or not the vaccines are working. The other big challenge here is going to be manufacturing. Even if one manufacturer is successful here, it's very unlikely that a single manufacturer is going to be able to supply even the entire domestic market. So we're really dependent upon multiple manufacturers making it over the finish line here in the United States. And then we want to have enough vaccine to export it, especially to low and middle income countries that are locked out of this race altogether and are dependent upon the developed markets to try to get vaccines into those regions. Seem to be some promising news today from the group out of Oxford in the U.K. regarding their vaccine uh, and the development there. What can you tell us? How promising is it? It's another step in the right direction. This is a group that now has a vaccine that's shown uh, good immunogenicity in animal studies and has been put into people. They, they built this vaccine off a prior vaccine that they had, the MERS. 
So they were able to get a head start. That's another form of coronavirus. They plan to be in um, about 6,000 patients heading into the summer and the fall. And so they'll get a good early look on whether that vaccine is showing early signs of efficacy and whether it's showing signs of safety. But in order to license a vaccine here, we're going to have to put it in tens of thousands of people. This is a vaccine that's going to be widely deployed. You're literally going to inoculate an entire population and maybe an entire globe. So the assurance of safety that you're going to want is going to be very high. Nobody's going to license a vaccine before it's been put in tens of thousands of patients in randomized, rigorous studies to determine not just that it's working, but that's safe. Feels like a daunting task when you mention the kind of numbers that we're actually talking about. Let's talk about a therapeutic, specifically Gilead's or remdesivir, a, a potential treatment we've talked about on numerous occasions. You raised the issue as well about what would happen if that is actually approved in Japan and Europe before it's approved here in the United States. How would that work? How would the company have to handle that? Well, it's a good question. Um, right now, the Japanese came out today and said that they may be in a position to license, the vac license that drug as early as uh, mid-May, early to mid-May. And so I think that statement surprised many people. That came from uh, the, the president, the, the leadership, the prime minister of uh, Japan, as well as some of their public health officials. Um, there's a limited supply, uh, and it's unclear what the United States would do. A lot of that supply is in the United States right now, and it's unclear whether or not the government would allow that supply to be shipped out of the country, even if the, the, the product itself is licensed in another country. Now, Gilead could stand up manufacturing in other countries, but it takes a long time to manufacture that product. And so even if Japan approved the product and tried to stand up manufacturing domestically in Japan, they're not going to have the drug right away. So the drug supply is really in the United States right now, and it's unclear what our government would do. If you were still running the FDA, would you allow it to leave the country before it was used for our own citizens? Yeah, I'll tell you, that, that decision is going to get made well above the level of the agency, and I suspect a decision like that might even go to the president's desk.